Let's talk about you, your journey with the playwright. You've chosen to do uh, David Young's Glen or David mm -hmm. Young's Expressible Island. So David has come up with a script and now you're going to go, you're going to take it through workshop and into production. How much do you kind of walk hand in hand with the playwright? How much do you lead the playwright? How much do you, wa do you st walk behind the playwright, allowing them to push forward? How does that relationship work? Uh, it's like, t I think it's like a bit like a tennis game. Um, you, if you can volley back to the playwright a question or a contradiction or a challenge uh, or, or, or a note, uh, you're hoping that the playwright will volley back better and up the ante with the response in the actual writing. And then you volley back, volley back. They actually make you a better director. And in the end, the, I think the ultimate goal is, and is to let the script carry everybody, uh, so that you don't have to do too much. The script will carry everybody, and yet everybody's carrying the script. Well, you don't want to carry the script. You want to play the script, surf on the script. The words become the context for the action. If you're starting to, if you're, you know, as we've seen, and you know, know you've been in plays where we've done, done, you know, too much exposition, and you're carrying the exposition to try and make it engaging and entertaining, but you can't, there's nothing engaging or entertaining about telling people what to think, which is what exposition is. But as the script has action, then you're allowed to go do the action, and every night you will change how the action plays differently. You have a goal. You have a thing you're pursuing. You, this is your. This is what I'll quote you. Is right when we talked about Richard, is like uh, um, 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 uh, uh, let lets the actor be a thoroughbred and run the race. He points you in the right direction, but I get to run the race. And when you're, that's what you want to do is give everybody the goal that they're achieving. Let them run the race, and then throw obstacles in their way, or challenges in the way that makes the race harder and harder. That may come from your opposite actor challenging you, right. so it's not so easy to run the race, is it? So it gets harder, right? Someone said something to you. You got you better hear that. You better listen to what that person said because you can't go on the next step. So and then it's about you know part of the repetition rehearsals, hearing all the variations that come as you take each step in the race, right? So if you see if you yeah. see either the actor missing something in rehearsal or the playwright missing something in Act One, yeah. you respond with a question. Father question. Sometimes I say, look at this. You've got to link up this thought to this thought. This is a great idea. You should talk about this. Sometimes, it's, you know, I will just say it because, right. there's, you know, I, I don't expect them actually to do it. I expect them to create a context for them to respond that brings their own imagination and creativity into it. Uh, sometimes they do do it because that's, it's, right. it's like sometimes, you know, the joy of a good line reading. Like everybody says, oh, you can't give a line reading. Well, no, that's actually not true. Line readings help to go, oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Because there is no way that you will ever do a line reading like I do a line reading. You will, you will hear the intonation, you'll hear the inflection, you'll hear the pursuit, but you're going to take it and your voice is different than mine, your body is different than mine, it'll be, it'll be utterly individual. It just helps. It's like mimesis or uh, miming another person or mimicking another person. That's part of the theater. 